Joining me now is Abercrombie & Fitch CEO Fran Horowitz. Fran, good to see you. Good to see you too, Sarah. Thanks for having me. So where is the, the momentum coming from in this business where it's a little bit of a tough slog for retailers right now? Yeah, listen, we're so excited with the quarter that we reported this morning. And what we're seeing is success across both of our brands. And we have an incredibly balanced success across brands, across genders, across regions, across channels. Um, so it's exciting that it's all working right now. And I guess the question for investors is, is it sustainable? You did raise guidance, but the stock is lower today. Why? It absolutely is sustainable. You know, this quarter and this year to date, what that represents, Sarah, is years of hard work by the team. We have fundamentally rebuilt this company, and we have a playbook that is working. We talk a lot about our inventory and how lean and mean it is. The ability to chase product is what's really driving a lot of our results. It's a muscle that we've built into our team. They're doing an excellent job at it. Better inventory, definitely part of the story. But, but what about for growth going forward, geographically and across the brands? What, what does that look like in the coming year? Lots of opportunity. I mean, we mentioned in our, you know, in, our invest, in our investor day last June that we have a big opportunity internationally. Now that we've had two quarters, you know, we're seeing an inflection point out there where, that, where both EMEA and APAC are beginning to grow. We've built talented teams in those regions. We're getting closer to that customer. And we've exported our playbook. Um, if you look at Abercrombie specifically, what we've been able to do there is really take that brand from a jeans and T-shirt brand. We've expanded the category assortments. We've expanded the age tremendously. And that's really what's helped helping us win. What do you think some of the most uh, surprising or important uh, style uh, choices that the consumer will be looking for next year are going to be? You know, David, you know what we're excited about is the fact that we're seeing a balance across our, our assortments, our tops, our bottoms, our dresses, our sweaters. We're seeing wins in a lot of categories. We made a big effort this year to expand beyond denim, and we're seeing the consumer respond to all these non-denim bottoms, whether that's trousers, loose-fitting bottoms, utility pants. All of that is, is really working for us. We've also developed franchises over the past couple of years that are continuing to grow, such as our YPB, which is our your personal best. That's our active brand for active for Abercrombie that's been about 18 months in the building and is continuing to grow. We're also seeing our dresses, our best dressed guest collection continuing to grow. So these franchises are really adding on to our business. Right. And, you know, it has, it's been a while now since we were talking about real supply chain, freight challenges in retail. Yeah. But are there lessons from that period that are still in use right now? Oh, absolutely. Having lean inventory and making sure that you have an agile supply chain and sourcing team is absolutely the way to go. Our inventories are down 20%. They're current. What the team is doing a nice job of is testing and learning, reacting, chasing the business. It's the best way to do it. What about the promotional environment, Fran? We heard this morning from Kohl's. I think they use the word aggressive promotional environment into the holiday season. What does that look like for you? Well, you know, the fourth quarter is always the most promotional time of the year. What we do, though, Sarah, we have to focus on what's working and what's not working within our own business. We do not promote um, what's necessarily about what's going on in the mall. We, we promote on what's working and not working in our business. We work with the teams very closely at this time of year. We sit down and analyze and assess the business. With the inventories where we are, we can really control our promotions. So we're excited about competing in the fourth quarter. You mean you can be less promotional than some of your competitors? As we have been, you know, this yeah. whole year running in, you know, we've been less competitive. Hollister is a great example of that. You know, 2022 was a tough year for teen retailers, and we had more inventory than we wanted to have. And now we, our inventories are in line, so we can, can really control those promotions. You know, Fran, one, one thing that keeps bubbling up from the retailers is the idea that the physical store uh, is more important. It gives the shopper an experience. On the other hand, you have to balance, obviously, the merchandising and the shrink, I guess, to some degree. How do you think about store growth versus uh, whatever growth you have online? Well, for us, um, David, we say stores matter because stores plus digital equals Omni, and Omni for us is the magic. So we have been on a stores journey for many, many years. We're actually a net store opener um, last year and, and, and heading into this year. We actually have a new strategy in our stores as well. Hopefully you have a chance, you know, in New York to see three of our brand new stores. We're opening up uh, neighborhood stores. We've opened them up in areas like um, Soho and Flatiron, as well as places like Greenwich Avenue and Greenwich, Connecticut. You know, with the brand where it is today, we probably could have never opened those stores several years ago. So we're super excited to explore that new strategy.